Good evening and welcome to Goodnight Hutch. Tonight we have a great show in store for you. We have local artist Koji Libby and local musician performing Bob Colliday. But before that, let's get into some news, shall we? The tennis coach from Trinity Catholic High School has been fired after posting a racist meme on Facebook. It's weird. Every time after we would pray, instead of saying amen, he'd say Abe Lincoln sucks. Oh. Safe to say his career is Wimbledon. Ten houses in Hutchinson will be receiving $25,000 grants for renovation. But if the homes before 1980 had children in them, they will be required to submit a blood sample. This only proves two things. Hutch kids love paint chips, and the banks are run by pedophile vampires. <laughs> 24 new Kansas police officers have just graduated from basic training. Shockingly, their certification only requires 14 weeks of training, but at least two years of getting hit by your stepdad. <laughs> Following Hutchinson's extremely peaceful Black Lives Matter protest, organized by local activist Nay Williams, our city council members shared their solidarity in a live city council meeting with all the other people that control your town. You might not have seen racism in your own world and in your own space. Um, I know of a few examples of, I dated a black man once and you. <laughs> Can't say I didn't see that coming. Stay tuned, we'll be back after these messages. Howdy y'all. Are you in need of keeping them anti-fashion towards knives out of your home? Oh man, if I got a woody deal for you. Come on down here to Merle's Wood Supply, and we got thick wood, big wood, and hard wood that'll keep them looters out. Keep you from using your guns like, let's be honest, you want to. <laughs> well, come on down, give us a call here at 620-665-5666. Or see our sign down here, Mangy, and give us a whack. <laughs> For his first ever late night talk show appearance, please help us welcome one of Hutchinson's most talented artists. Koji Libby. Hi, how are you? Have a seat. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, why don't you go ahead and start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm 19. I was born and raised here in Hutchinson. Uh, I went to school at Nickerson for actually my entire educational career. Very cool. I went to Hutch CC for a short period of time, but no longer. Um, and now I'm just focusing on my art, trying to do what I love. Yeah, yeah, let's definitely jump right into that art. Some of the most beautiful work that I've ever seen, and you guys will get a chance to see some of that tonight, too. Um, when was the moment that you knew you'd be an artist? You know, I really didn't have, like, a specific moment, but I do know that, like, even as a child, I always preferred to stay in, in like, color mm -hmm. rather than going outside. Um, so I think I just always had an inclination for it, but I definitely started getting serious um, around, like, fifth or sixth grade. I think it's probably when people start telling you like, wow, you're so good. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, am I? Like, yep. should I do this? <laughs> of course. Awesome. Um, and what inspires you? Um, honestly, it probably, a lot of it is like just human form, just like how different people can be. Um, I definitely like to draw subjects that are a little bit ambiguous, like either with their race or like their gender and things like that. Um, I think that keeping people um, in art that aren't just like your average person is really good. To let people know that like diversity is okay and you know just like help people to open their minds a little bit. Amazing, amazing. Um, where do you see your art taking you? You know I'm not sure but I hope it takes me somewhere. Um, honestly as long as I'm doing art I honest, like I don't even really care where I am or like what I'm doing just as long as I'm having a good time. Awesome. Um, and what would you say challenges you the most about being an artist? Um, I think it's definitely challenging to sort of get a foothold in the art community because it's a little difficult to just like jump into somewhere where Especially in Hutch, you know most of the artists here are older and they've been around for a while So when you're younger, it's a little difficult to like get in there um, And then I think the next biggest thing is probably just like experimentation It's really hard to like get out of your comfort zone and try new things But I think that's really important to do as an artist as well. Of course um, And do you still have art up at the Hutchinson Art Center? I know I saw my very first experience was with you was at the art center. I was just yeah. blown away by one of your pieces. I do. I have. I usually have at least one piece up in the consignment gallery, and then I'm also working with the art center and Stage Nine for their new Hutchinson the Pandemic play. I've been helping them to create like their posters for their advertising and things like that. Perfect. And what other artists inspire you? 
I think that my two favorite artists are probably Ivan Alifin and Henrik Oldelin. They're both definitely surreal artists in different ways, for sure, but I just think their paintings are so amazing. Um, I feel like I also draw a lot of inspiration from uh, other artists who are at the same stage that I am. Like, uh, the art community on Instagram is definitely something that's very nice to be a part of because you see a lot of people that are at different stages kind of in the same journey, you're all working towards the same thing. Right. And I think I definitely draw a lot of inspiration from them just because I know that we're in the same shoes. And I'm like, if they can do it, like, I can do it too. Right, that's amazing. Yeah, and I understand you have some uh, donations that you have going on with your art right now on your Instagram. You wanna tell me a little bit about that? Yes, so I've been doing, um, anyone who donates to the Black Lives Matter uh, movement can send me a DM with their confirmation of their donation of either $10 or more and I will send them a free print. And the more you donate, like the more I'll include in the package. Um, the only thing is that it needs to be to a reputable source because not all charities actually give all the money. So I do have a link for four different charities that I know are very good. So I have the American Civil, Civil Liberties Union, Black Lives Matter, um, the George Floyd Memorial Fund, and then uh, Black Visions Collective. Awesome, and we'll have descriptions and uh, links in our descriptions below. Uh, thank you so much for that interview. Now, if you had a message to tell fellow members of our Hutch LGBTQ community, what would it be? I think my biggest message would just be, you know, you're not alone. Like, it's a really small community and it's really hard to find people who are like you in those ways, but I think it's getting a lot easier and I think the community is opening up a lot more. So I think a really big part of it is just being open and confident with who you are. Even if people disagree, um, you have to do what's best for you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Koji, and we wish you the best of luck on all of your artistic adventures. All right, thank you. Stay tuned. After these commercials, we have musical guest Bob Colliday. Hi, I'm Earl from Girls Glass Supply, right down here on Main Street. Have you been buying that shitty wood from my brother again? Man, I'll tell you what, he, he takes that out of people's backyard, trying try to sell something to the looters. Well, don't you worry about them liberals ever shooting through this glass. We got thick glass here stopping up bullets. Hell, we even got stained glass, dark glass, shiny glass with that American flag. And, uh, oh, we'll even take your glass. Ah, son of a... <laughs> we'll even take your glass that's broken and tape it back together from them looters and sell it back to you for 30% off. Well, don't forget to call us. Call us at, uh... 620-474-651. Our next guest is a well-known musician and community member of Hutchinson. Please help us welcome our neighborly ukulele man, Bob Colliday. Oh, you got some moves there. Hello, have a seat, have a seat. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Bob. My pleasure. Well, how long have you been playing music? Um, since about 1997. Very cool, very cool. Uh, when did you first pick up the ukulele? It was about 2000, I think. So this might be my 20th anniversary of ukulele. Ukulele. Or ukulele. Ukulele. Depending on who you ask. <laughs> was, well, happy anniversary. Well, thank you. Yeah, I was a... Uh, I was really big into guitar and I used to take my guitar with me everywhere and I went out of town to a wedding and didn't take it with me because I was going to be good and not bother people. <laughs> but we had a break after the wedding and I went to uh, the downtown of whatever town we were in Oklahoma and went to a music store and I saw a ukulele and I was like, what's up with these things? And they were like, oh, it's kind of like playing a guitar. Probably. And I was like... 20 bucks, it's mine, took it, and actually for about the first year I didn't even understand how to tune it because they're interesting. If you've never played ukulele, it's like, it's called re-entrant tuning. Look oh. that up on Urban Dictionary. Much easier to travel with than a Yes, guitar, definitely. You sneak it in <laughs> your coat. Very cool. Uh, who would you say inspires you the most musically? Uh, I always go back to Frank Sinatra, even though I'm no Frank Sinatra, but I do enjoy like the songwriter standards of that era big band and stuff but lately it's been like more like cake and wilco and they might be giants those are and elvis costello those are probably my 
four biggest influences. Very awesome. And we know you're involved in music primarily, but you were also a part of the Theater Guild and you've helped out Stage 9. What yep. got you interested in theater arts? I had done, I think my first show was with the uh, Family Children's Theater, or now Family Community Theater. I played Jed Clampett in the Beverly Hillbillies. It was the first time I'd ever auditioned for anything. and. Um, got the theater bug because I'm basically an attention whore. So um, it seemed like a legitimate way to get that necessary attention. And I did a few shows with them. And then one time I got a call from someone at the Hutchinson Theater Guild, now Stage 9. And they asked me if I would direct a show. And I was like, much like most of my life, I was like, I've never directed. Sure. That'd be fine. Fair enough. Really awesome. All right, last question. If you could bring back one venue to Hutchinson that is no longer here, which one would it be? I would say I liked um, the W a lot. Um, I liked the mix of bands they brought in and especially their attention to local musicians. I'll, honestly, though, there was a, in the Salvation Army, there was this little coffee house called Com. What was it called? Common Ground? Mm-hmm. Sounds oh, right. Yeah. Like, it's is an that old right? One, right? I don't remember I what it was called. I just moved back, so I'm, I'm, I don't remember I'm what not called. too savvy on the businesses. Old or new. Some punny <laughs> coffee name is all I really remember. But it was nice. It was a really comfortable venue. So, yeah, the W probably. Awesome. Bob, thanks again for coming. Would you like to share any uh, upcoming shows you have? Yeah, coming up uh, July 31st. And August 1st, I'm involved in this really cool project, a joint venture between the Hutchinson Art Center and Stage 9. It's going to be a live on YouTube event. Uh, it's called Hutchinson the Pandemic. It's really funny. It stars uh, local community members, some of them maybe as puppets, I think. Cool. And it's yeah, they really do funny. A lot of cool stuff I'm going to be playing some ukulele and stuff, but it's a really funny show. I'm looking forward to that. And then August 8th at Sand Hills Brewery, I have a show with Ryan Brooks. And those should be, I think, my swan songs of Hutchinson because I'm planning on moving out at the end of the summer. So We're going to miss you, Bob. All Me right, too. folks, don't turn that dial. When we get back, you'll have a performance by Bob.
And then she probes me, yeah, like an alien should. And then she probes me, yeah, just like I hope she would. And she probes me, don't want to get away. Cause she probed me, yeah, she probed me, oh, yeah, she probed me with love. Are people going to stop being closet racist by continually opposing the Black Lives Matter movement in small towns across America? The late Martin Newell once said, It's not what you know that makes you smart. It's the desire to understand what you don't. Are you going to listen with honest ears and stand with your systematically discriminated against community? The term defunding is just a media-created buzzword to convolute and polarize the issue. Police should not continue to be municipal revenue generators for the elite and their puppets, known as politicians. We must change this self-beneficial, failed test run of democracy that is riddled with racism and classism. For ways to donate to the Black Lives Matter community and other victims of police brutality, please check our description box below. Good night, Hutch. I'm Sage Pena.